This is Chantman Mutuk. Thank you. 
So, this next song is kind of a special one. Um, so it was uh, originally written by a musician named uh, Gennady Chamsurin. So his uh, stage name was Gendos, and Gendos... Gendos was a, a very talented uh, person, kind of just in general. He came from this far western region of Tuva, uh, over near the Altai Mountains, uh, in a region called Bai Taiga. Um, and often, uh, you know, the, t the village that he was from is often known for having very talented people. And he, he himself, uh, you know, was a throat singer, uh, instrument builder, leather worker, woodworker, um, just all around interesting entertainer. Um, and he, uh, he was one of the first people to really kind of mix in some, some of the aesthetic of shamanism into music in Tuva. Um, won't be performing one of those pieces tonight, but what we will be performing is the piece that he wrote about his homeland by Taiga, um, about, you know, the, the richness of the land and the, uh, the heroic people. And uh, the reason we're playing these instruments is, uh, so this is the Mongolian Murinhor. So the Murinhor, uh, maybe you can give an explanation of the Murinhor. So, oh, it's actually out of frame right now. The Murinhor I have right here is a more modern uh, rendition of the ancient fiddle, which is uh, found all throughout Central Asia. All of the uh, Mongol and Turkic countries have their own version. Um, this one actually had last uh, made, sorry, had made uh, last summer as a memorial to my late grandfather, and yeah, you know, so it's to, uh, it's a bow of horse hair, and two strings made of horse hair, so as the old joke goes, I'm actually playing horse hair with horse hair. All right, and um, yeah, as you see, about them seagulls. So as you see here, uh, I have a horse head, and there's a number of reasons right now for you know having essentially this horse head cart and put on top of the instrument and um, a big one is from the spiritual aspect of uh, an animal head giving the instrument soul if you will so yeah that's good enough for now huh? and so again those would uh, taught himself how to play the Mongolian Horenkhor, I guess, uh, you know, it's one of just his, you know, kind of amazing stories about him. Uh, he also played cello and he played 12-string guitar too, which this song was kind of composed for that, so that's why I'm playing this. So, bye Taiga.
this song. It's called Banda uh, Bada, and it's a uh, the song was sort of popularized by a Tuvan folk rock band called Yatha. Um, you might have heard of them because they're also recently featured on a uh, commercial for the new uh, one of the new iPhones that came out. Um, but yeah, they were kind of the uh, definitive Tuvan um, folk rock band. Um, this song came out quite a while ago now, but it's a traditional song. It's about uh, missing, missing your love. I'm the body.
next song is going to be uh, my solo. It's called Amiran, which is the, um, the Altai folk dialect of uh, Amran, which means uh, to rest in Mongolian or uh, Hatch Mongolian. And this song is very partial to me. A lot of spiritual experiences around it. And um, yeah. So the song originally was a um, was a Mongolian song. I believe it's a folk song for the most part. There's no uh, writer or author that I can coherently discern. Um, however, the Altai folk in the Northwest actually made it very popular. They um, cleaned it up, if you will. Really brought it brought it um, out, made it shine with their own kind of uh, dialect and styles and everything. So. I'll be going over uh, the Altai version of uh, Mira. Singing about uh, yeah, missing mountain homelands where where the Kadarchi where the Kadarchi live, um, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, very beautiful, very sad song. Uh, it's one of the songs that kind of connects Mongolia and Tuva, and because uh, this melody is found throughout these places too. So. Yeah, this is a song that has it has lyrics in Tuvan language and in the Mongolian language. Yeah. What you'll notice about both our cultures is that, uh, or both our respective cultures is that there are a lot of songs about exile. So, yeah, being a Mongolian is just a somber experience. <laughs>
Oh, 
of two songs really, in other words, splicing together two songs here. Um, and it's, uh, both of them are again songs about, uh, kind of about exile too, about um, these, uh, these songs both come from the, uh, the, um, these songs both come from, uh, Tuvans who live outside of the Republic of Tuva, outside of Siberia. The, um, the, the songs uh, come from northwestern China and uh, western, southwestern Mongolia, um, where the uh, single Tuvan people live. And the, um, yeah, so this, uh, yeah, there's, uh, where they also speak a different dialect too. Um, so these, yeah, these people um, have had to kind of move around quite a lot because they've been subject to a few different uh, groups of people that have taken them over. Uh, one of them was the, uh, the, the Dongan people came up from the south and uh, pushed a lot of Tuvans that were living in what is now northwestern China into uh, Mongolia. Uh, so these songs are about, um, you'll find in, in these groups of people that there's a lot of songs about places, um, places that some of them no longer exist also. I try and do this here. So this instrument is the uh, Russian version of the accordion. It's a chromatic button accordion called the bayan. Uh, and the style I'll be singing these two um, Tsengles and uh, Kanas Tuvan songs in, is in a style of someone who is actually from the Republic of Tuva. Uh, so Vladimir Oydupa, who is a, quite a complicated character, but um, he cr pretty much pioneered this style of throat singing, which is a high kargara style, um, while playing the bayan accordion. So this is kind of my own, uh, you know, song kind of ode to uh, these people in the various regions of the world uh, where Tuvans, you know, have had to go and also to Vladimir Wojtypa and his impact on the tune and music.
So the next song we have is called uh, Singing, which is a very, by this point, it's, I believe it's a pop song actually, like a vintage tooth and pop song from uh, the mid to late 90s by uh, artist Andre Mangush, legendary uh, throat singer. But earlier in his career, yeah, I mean, it was, it was very, um, pa, at the time very popular, now very nostalgic pop song. Uh, he's going to explain more in depth now. Yeah, so this is, it's just a uh, kind of a very sweet love song. Um, the original version of this song was um, recorded, uh, yeah, where you could really hear the um, Casio keyboard in it. So it was kind of, you can kind of imagine the, the vibe, uh, quite nostalgic and quite, um, yeah. But uh, if, if you spent any time around, um, you know, in, I guess in former Soviet countries, there's kind of an aesthetic that comes along with the whole, that whole period. Uh, and this song is very reminiscent of that. And uh, if you ask any Tuvan person about this song, um, they'll, be very, they'll be very surprised that you know it. I think the only places you can find it is like on websites with, uh, with the dot .ru afterwards, which is, uh, you know, so a little difficult to find. This song, yeah, it's called Senge. Uh, so this is our, um, our sort of traditional style reworking of this song. subject to humidity so we'll definitely be tuning quite a lot. <laughs> Thank you. 
çartıp turda Menin dimşin çastırım köy Billahın ne menni yarşıp Borganın sener gimbeşin
All right. So we're going to uh, we're going to inviting him up now. Yes. Yeah, we're, inviting, we're inviting Mike up to the stage. Yeah. Spicy Mike. Special appearance by Spicy Mike. <laughs> so he is going to uh, be joining us um, on this uh, traditional style Tuvan drum called the King Girge. Um He really has, uh, you know, we're. We're kind of... He taught uh, me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> In, <laughs> that's all I want to say. <laughs> but um, it's quite fitting because um, Michael is really uh, a good friend of Tuva. He is really a... Um, you know, there's, there's a lot in store that we've got coming. Um, yeah, not to say too much, but... Uh, you know, if this... Uh, this man has, has been witness to a lot of history in, in Tuva, has recorded a lot of history in Tuva, and was, has spent personal time with Kongorol Ondar, and uh, spent a lot of time at the cultural center. He's been to Toju with the reindeer herders, um, and many other places too, right? So. Wow, when you put it like that, I really have <laughs> so. That's why he's, yeah, he's really done quite a lot. He's done more in Tuva than you know, most people can say, you know, a lot of, not a lot of people around the world have had the experiences that he's had, and um, not only that, but also in facilitating, you know, a lot for, you know, Tuvan performers and everybody, and, and for myself included, too, you know, I mean, this, uh, yeah, I'm very thankful to be here and for, you know, to be playing at my best friend's venue and that this is uh, all working out this way and and you also just get to see how talented of a musician he is too because that's something that I think also doesn't get get out there enough so we'll but we'll work on that we'll get you'll be seeing more of him I'm sure oh uh, thank you very much Robert <laughs> and might I add you will seldom find a more pure and kind man exactly yes with beautiful hair that's a lot <laughs> So the namesake of our, um, you know, they're sort of my Tuvan uncles and um, close friends of uh, really everybody in this group here. And um, uh, this, the band Alash Ensemble is named after the Alash River in uh, in Tuva. Um, so this song is uh, is a song dedicated to the uh, Alash River. So.
a big honor to be on stage with these guys. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> really an honor to be here with you. Next song is uh, also a very famous Tuvan song about um, about uh, the Yenisei River and about the uh, about ancestors too. This is a very powerful song about Kargara and Hume. Uh, you know, coming from the ancestors, who ancestors who have turned into uh, standing stones and stone statues in the steppe. So, yeah.
our next song is uh, one where you can actually sing along with us. No. So, <laughs> hopefully it wasn't that one. Nope, it's not right no, there. <laughs> uh, so, repeat after me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> See, he can actually do it, but, um, but it's alright. So, if you can sing like this, repeat after me. Asho de keo. Asho de keo. Asho de keo. Asho de keo. So we're gonna sing it a little bit faster, but um, this is a song. Uh, you know, often people kind of think that you know Tuvan music is. Um, is uh, you know a very spiritual thing, and it can be. Tuvan and Mongolian music can be quite spiritual. But uh, this song that we're about to finish this uh, show with tonight is uh, you know probably a bit more familiar. Uh, that, you know, this is a song about you know, as we like to say in our circle uh, of musicians, Tuvan musicians. It's a song about good horses and beautiful women. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Tuvan country song. And Ashu Dekeo, who, who wants to guess what Ashu Dekeo means? Give us a clue. Okay. Mountains. It means Ashu Dekeo. It's a local. Yeah, exactly. Notably set by Fatter Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I caught him on.